this segment we're going to talk about modeling the arts and cultural ecosystem and looking at what drives performance. To advance our mission and to understand what are really the important questions that need to be answered in order to understand the health of arts and cultural organizations, we really needed to stop and take a step back and think about what are all of the elements that might influence or affect organizational performance. After all, arts organizations don't exist in a vacuum. This meant that we had to try to model the arts and cultural ecosystem, which is a complex set of interdependent relationships between independent artists, the arts and cultural organizations themselves, the distinct communities in which they reside, and the cultural policy that influences both the production and the consumption of arts and culture. When you think of it, you would expect, for example, that a large organization that's been around for a long time and is located in a wealthy community with a lot of art support, well, it should perform well. On the other hand, a new arts and cultural organization that has a really small budget operates in a low-income community and doesn't have a lot of art support, well, it's going to face certain challenges. To really understand what drives performance, we have to take into account both the operating model of the organization as well as the operating conditions in which it resides. This means that we had to gather data from each of those four components from the ecosystem, from a variety of sources. And this has resulted in a very large data set, uh, a diverse data set, and it also has created for us a data-driven model of the arts and cultural ecosystem. To answer questions related to what organizational characteristics affect performance, we had to start by gathering data about the arts organizations themselves. And we did this by collaborating with our partners, our data partners, the Cultural Data Project and Theater Communications Group. And we've also collected data from IRS 990s from the National Center for Charitable Statistics. Together, this gives us nearly 230,000 unique records of arts organizations' data for a five-year period from 2008 through 2012. Or we have data on roughly 50,000 unique arts and cultural organizations, some of which responded in multiple years. For each and every arts organization, we geocoded it so that we could pinpoint its latitude and longitude. This means that we can situate it in its community so we're able then to find out what market characteristics might affect whether or not it can perform well. To explore how do community characteristics affect performance, we went to the Census Bureau. And from the Census Bureau, we were able to get socio-demographic information about communities, as well as information about what businesses are in a community and what arts-related entities exist. From the Cultural Data Project, we also have kind of a census of what arts and cultural organizations are in that community by sector. So is there a high concentration or a low concentration, and how does that affect performance? We also have data on a variety of other sources, such as the Consumer Confidence Index. On the individual artist side, from the Census Bureau, we have information on the number of artists living in a community, and we've geocoded that as well. We have the community data, and we've geocoded it as well for a five-year period. In total, this has allowed us to create a spatial model that represents 44,000 different zip codes, or basically all of America. To answer what impact does cultural policy have on performance, the National Endowment for the Arts and the IMLS provided us with five years of grant data. In addition, from the CDP, we also have reported measures from each of the organizations on the level of federal, state, and local funding that each receives. The ecosystem elements together explain some level of variation in each of the performance measures. The better job they do at explaining some variation in performance it means that the better the predictors are at actually predicting performance. Want to know more? Visit the report sections on modeling the arts and cultural ecosystem and driving forces.